Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs of 19th January 2024. So first of all, we are going to take PDF of Delhi edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the important topics which are relevant from our examination point of view. So there is no need of reading each and every article and each and every word which is there in your newspaper. So that is not much correct approach of reading current affairs. So by heart the syllabus. So first of all, if you want to pick up the articles from newspaper and if you want to identify which are the articles important from our examination point of view. So first and the foremost thing that you have to do is by heart the syllabus. So syllabus will guide you like in which way you have to go in how many ways you can read the subject and how can you interconnect with the subjects. So all these things that will you that will be getting only through the syllabus. So if you know the syllabus then you can easily start and you will moving in the right path in your journey. Okay. So let us see the front page. So this is front page of Hindu. So we are going to pick out the articles. So here the article it is about Navy helps drone hit vessel in Gulf of Aden. So this article is talking about ships which are attacking in this Gulf of Aden. So already number of times we discuss this topic, right? And not only this, so this topic nine kill as Pakistan launches reiterate air strikes in Iran. So this article is also important and more or less these two articles are same. Okay, related to a single topic and we are going to discuss different dimensions regarding these two topics. So this article is related to Israel-Palestine issue. So this article is related to Israel-Palestine issue. So the first dimension is you have to see from GS1 geography point of view that is location. So location of what? Location of Israel and Palestine and location of Red Sea and the country sharing boundary with Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea and even you have to see Bab El Mandap. And you have to see the countries which are part of Horn of Africa. Okay, so these are the important places that you have to see. Okay, regarding this issue. And now let us see next dimension. From GS paper to under international relations point of view. So actually what happened here? So in Palestine, we have Hamas. So Hamas or militant group, they are operating from this Palestine and this Hamas, they started attacking Israel. Okay. And Israel in retaliation to start attacking this Palestine. And in this issue, many number of countries, they joined like US and UK, they started supporting Israel. And another side here, Iran and Houthis, they are Shia militant group, Houthis are Shia militant group. So they started supporting this Hamas. And we have United Nations Security Council, right, UNSC, so which is one of the important United Nations organization which focuses on establishing of peace and stability. So in this UNSC, so number of times resolutions had been passed. So this is also one important thing. And you have to see like recently South Africa approached ICJ, International Court of Justice regarding this issue of Israel-Palestine because the human rights of the people, they had been compromised here okay so these are some important things 
and now let us see some more important dimensions so what happened is iran is saying that we are controlling red sea and movement of the ships in this red sea because this iran it is not sharing directly boundary with this red sea but here we have yemen so yemen is sharing boundary and it is having this houthis so these houthis they are attacking the ships which are moving in this red sea and gulf of aden and here you have to think one more important issue is role of india so india is sharing boundary with this indian ocean and india is playing a lot of important role in maintaining of peace and security in this indian ocean so in this context you have to see role of indian navy so you have to see role of indian navy and as well as indian coast guard so because recently uh, whenever this merchant vessels they were attacked by the drones or even one piracy happened right so in that issue also indian navy and coast guard played a very important role and finally they rescued boat or the merchant vessel so this article is saying that again the ships which are moving in this red sea they have been attacked by the drones okay so this is the thing which mainly said and these all are the dimensions that you have to think about from this article and even you can connect this topic with gs paper 3 economy so you can know about what will be the impact on global trade so you can see like what is the impact on the global trade so all these are important things and dimensions regarding this topic is that clear so i am connecting a gs1 international relations in as plus gs3 economy clear or not so if you have any doubts so please post your doubts in the comment box so that i will be uh, resolving your doubts in the next class okay clear and now let us move on to next topic so in this city page there is nothing much important in today's paper so you can leave the city page for today and you can move on to this states page so this is a states page and most of the articles are political articles only you can move on from here here you can see one article that is about one important scheme calcutta high court sets up team to verify mg narega's job cuts so here you can see like calcutta high court directed to set up four member team for an expeditious verification of job cards under this mg narega program on district wise basis in west bengal so because of this this is a news and what are the things that you have to see here so you have to know about mg narega so what is the full form here so full form is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so you have to see when we came so when we came that is in year 2005 we came up with this act so what is this act which is providing it is providing 100 days of it is providing 100 days of guarantee employment in which areas only in rural areas that to unskilled work okay so it is providing 100 days of guarantee employment in the rural area for unskilled laborers and we are also going to create assets it is not only providing work or it is also helpful for maintenance of right to livelihood right to livelihood and also we are creating assets so that it will be helpful for development of this rural areas and not only this this mg narega which is also very much useful for attaining our self uh, sorry sustainable development goals like hunger poverty uh, living standard of living okay etc so all those things 
we can achieve by using this engineering scheme but here in this scheme we have lots and lots of challenges so we have to focus on these challenges so first challenge here is there is decreased budgetary allocation decreased budgetary allocations and using of technology is also an important problem for attendance purpose and even we are getting very minimum wages and now we have problem of bogus cards and even one more issue here is delayed payments Okay, so these are some important challenges of this MG Narega scheme. So whenever any scheme which is in use, you have to see some dimensions. Like what is this scheme? Remember this thing. What is this scheme? So what are the provisions under which ministry it's come under? And also you can see like whether it is central sector scheme or centrally sponsored scheme and from mains point of you have to know analysis based like what are the advantages of the scheme or what are the significance and what are the challenges or drawbacks or you can also see even loopholes so all these things are very important from your means so in this way you have to read the articles so if you are getting points and if you understand like how to read the newspaper please hit the like button okay so don't say any thank you for me just hit the like button that's it and now let us move on here you can see one more important article that is 13 percentage of land mass in kerala vulnerable to this land slips shows map so this article is at most important because we are using this artificial intelligence here so artificial intelligence based map of kerala revealed that about 13 percentage of land in kerala is vulnerable to this land mass or landslides so now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about Kerala and landslides. It is talking about Kerala and landslides, right? Okay, now let us connect with this GS paper one under geography. Here you have to know why Kerala is susceptible. So if you see here in Kerala, we have Western Ghats. So if you are comparing this Western Ghats with Himalayas, so they are somewhat stable but even though here this western guards is vulnerable to this landslides why why because of some reasons like rainfall mining developmental projects construction activities etc and here you have to know some important things like what is this landslide? What are the different types of landslides? And you have to see what will be the impact of landslides. And you have to see what are the measures that can be taken to decrease this incidence. And you have to see like what are the government initiatives. So these are some important dimensions that you can see from both prelims and as well as from mains point of view. Okay, and this landslides topic is important from GS paper 1 and as well as from your GS paper 3 under disaster management. And from disaster management point of view, you have to see the guidelines. Guidelines to prevent this landslides. Clear? And now let us move on. 
नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज इसरो अपग्रेड्स इट्स डिस्ट्रेस अलर्ट डिवाइस फॉर फिशरमैन सो दिस आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट डी ए टी इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो दिस आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट डिस्ट्रेस अलर्ट डिवाइस ओके डिस्ट्रेस अलर्ट डिवाइस सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर फ्रॉम फिशर वन फैमिली सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर लिविंग इन द कोस्टल एरियाज सो इफ यू आर इन द कोस्टल एरियाज यू माइट बी नोइंग वेल अबाउट दिस डिस्ट्रेस अलर्ट डिवाइस रैदर दैन मी ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल So in this coastal areas, people will be normally going for shifting uh, for this fishing. So fishing will be the source of livelihood for these people who are living in the coastal areas. So they will be taking their ship, and they will be moving far. So whenever they are moving far into the seas and oceans to catch the fish, so they do not have any network. Yes, sir. No, they do not have any mobile network. So if they want to convey information, so there will be no chance of conveying of information. So they have to wait until they will be getting the signals. Okay, so whenever they are reaching near to the coast, then only they will be getting the signals. Okay, so here if they want to uh, send the critical, important, or emergency message, then how can? For example, there is a cyclone or there is tsunami that is going to be hit, and because of that they are facing problem. at that time here they can use this distress alert device to send the message and based on the message which is sent by that so and so people so here the information is generated and that information will be also identifying the location of that ship and the coast guard they will be moving to that place for the rescue and operations right so this is about the importance of this distress alert device so here isro came up with this first stage of this distress alert device and now it came with the second generation okay so because of this this is in news and here you have to see some facts regarding isro and you have to see what are the advantages what are the advantages of this distress alert device or distress alert uh, technology and you have to see what are the drawbacks so in this way you can think about this topic clear and now let us move on you can directly move on to this editorial page is there is an article it is regarding places of worship act of 1991 so this article is talking about motivated litigation so it is talking about converting of places of worship from one religion to another religion so this article is very important and here you can see some dimensions that is about places of so this article is talking about this topic place of worship act So I have to see what is this law, and what are the provisions. So this is also talking about some exceptions. What are they? And you can see Supreme Court judgments. Okay, and you can see like what are the challenges. So these all are the dimensions that you can think about this topic, and this is at most important from your means. Clear? And we are going to see each and every dimension. Don't worry. And next topic is crafting a new face in India UK defence ties. So recently, our defence minister he visited UK and he came up with some agreements and as well as memorandum of understanding. So because of this, this article is in news. 
and here what are the dimensions you can think so it is talking about india uk relations so you have to see map of uk and you have to see important areas of cooperation okay and you have to see what are the loopholes or the challenges okay so these are some important things that you have to remember and this topic is important from gs paper to under international relations so under international relations point of view this topic is important and you can move on to this text and context here there is one interesting article that is how satellites track the weather so we have different types of uh, satellites right so we have telecommunication satellites we have earth observation satellites okay so here if you see regarding this observing of weather so we have this uh, this satellite that is insat that we are using so by using this insat 3d satellite which has red green blue or images who chooses colors determined by the two factors such as solar reflectance and the brightness and temperature so based on the solar reflectance and based on the brightness and temperature so we can see this type of images with the different colors so inside 3d and 3d r satellites are currently active in this geostationary orbits around the earth and at an inclination of 82 degrees and 74 degrees east longitudes so both inside 3d and inside 3d r use radio meters to make their spectral measurements okay so this is about this topic and i want to show you one paragraph which is very important here is how do this forecast will be done by the satellites so here in insat 3d and insat 3d r they use as radio meters to make their spectral measurements and a radio meter it is nothing but a device that founds the various useful properties of radiation and even typically there also has some advantages like radiation interaction with the matter and for example in the form of temperature or economical or electrical activity and even these satellites they also carry atmospheric sounders and they measure the temperature as well as humidity on the surface and they will study this vapor as a function of their heights from the ground okay and here in this way the scientists are using this radio meter measurements and as well as sounder measurements and they will be understanding this atmospheric characters so in this way here satellites they are mainly collecting the information regarding this earth okay now let us move on to new page directly so this is our new page yes here you can see the article it is regarding india says its hopes to resolve issue of troops in maldives so as you know that the, there is a controversy uh, which is going on in social media platforms like boycott maldives okay hashtag boycott maldives yes or no so this is a issue because of our prime minister visit to this lakshadweep i know after that is done here uh, here maldivian presidents they remove sorry the maldivian ministers they ask to resolve the issue they ask to remove the troops of india from this maldives so it is one of the important issue that i can say and this topic is important from international relations which comes in the gs paper too and next topic is niti ayog report on poverty is not reliable so niti ayog came with a report okay so this report is saying that when 24.82 crore people they have moved out of multi dimensional poverty poverty in india okay and even here it also says that saving that scientists do not correlate to other in indices such as private consumption growth it had been slowed on 4.4 percentage so here this article says that here overall niti ayog report is saying that poverty is decreased but on reality still poverty is exist which is mainly said by this article okay and now let us move on Yes, here you can see one interesting topic that is GM. GM crops will make edible oil cheaper, says government. 
so if we're talking about oil sources now we are importing this oil for example palm oil we are importing from indonesia and if we're talking about sunflower oil we are importing from russia and ukraine okay so here we're talking about sunflower oil we are getting from russia and ukraine and from indonesia we are getting this palm oil and if you're talking about crude oil you are getting from la largely from western areas but this palm oil and sunflower oil they are edible oils that means we can eat them so here whenever we are going for using of this genetically modified crops it says that we can decrease the cost of this oil price that is edible oil price so this is the thing which mainly set here so here you can see some more dimensions from your science and technology point of view like what is this genetically modified crops so you have to know about what is genetically modified crops and you have to see some examples of this crops like we have bt cotton bt brinjal and now we are talking about gm mustard okay so these are the points that you have to remember okay that's all these are very important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper and now let us see the notes so if you want to get the notes you can join the telegram channel link is given in the description box so meanwhile if you have any doubts so please text me your doubts in the comment box so i will be having some water clear as of now any doubts anyone so if you have any doubts regarding the perspectives please let me know so in this way you have to connect your subjects and you have to think in many perspectives so why i'm saying continuously perspectives here is you have to write an answer in a multi dimensional manner it's not on a single dimension you have to see so we're talking about impact of climate change so you have to see like impact what it will be on environment what it will be on economy global trade what will be the impact on society so like that you have to connect at least 7 to 8 dimensions so that thing that you can write and that you can learn from this newspaper that i want to teach you because really i want to share the fact so in coaching centers they will be focusing on only completing of your syllabus that 230 to 40 percent of syllabus will be completed so they will be not completing the entire syllabus and will not at all focus on this main translating practice and once your coaching is done you will be coming back to your home and you will be self uh, preparing with the self study right so at that time no one will teach you like how to write an answer so that is a problem many students who are losing this means so one bitter fact i want to say is some students they will be clearing prelims line okay so serial serial like four to five times but they will not clear means but there are some category of students so they will be failing prelims for four times and once if they clear the prelims automatically their selection will happen so why because they have the good grip on answer writing so answer writing is a ball game okay so this skill that you will not develop overnight you will take lots and lots of time even you have to focus for at least one and half year on this answer writing practice okay so practice your question so i will try to give you diary one question so try to write answer for that question so now let us see the notes part so this notes you can get from this telegram channel and the link is given in description box 
Yes, we are going to start this new batch of mains answer writing practice from 2022 20, 20 January 2024 20, onwards. That is 22nd January we are starting this answer writing practice course. And this course is for one year. So we are going to give you daily one question only. On Sundays you will be having a and case study practice. So here we are covering entire your GS, GS syllabus like GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 along with this case studies and as well as essay and we also provide you the modal answer for each and every question essay and case study and you're also going to provide you the detailed evaluation of your answers so initially believe me answers will be rubbish so you don't like what to write in interaction what to write in body and conclusion but even though whatever it may be so you have to start writing so you have to give some work to your brain and your hand so that here it will move, go on smoothly in the future. And next one is we are also having this live doubt clearing sessions that too through Zoom. Okay. So there you are going to address your problems of answer writing. And if you are facing any problems, we are going to discuss there. And one more thing here is we are also providing you the live essay and case study practice. Okay. Online, you have to write the essay and as well as case study. So you may get the doubts like, ma'am, I don't know anything. So how can I start? So many students, they have this uh, doubt like, so I didn't even complete a basic NCRTs. And how can I write? Yes, if you see from GS1 point of view, so it includes subjects like history, geography and Indian society. So more or less they are static. So if you completed your static, then you can easily focus on your dynamic part. Okay, so how this program will run? So first we are going to give you 52 weeks of schedule and you have to prepare on that schedule and this schedule is weekly based. Okay, so we have weekly targets. Okay, we have weekly targets and you have to prepare on that and you have to write answer by using stopwatch. Why? Because you have to understand like how much amount of time that you are taking to write a single answer. And after that, you can send your answer in PDF format to our mail ID so that the detailed evaluation will be done. And later on, the feedback and the corrected copy will be sent back to your mail. And you have to check the feedback and you have to improve on that feedback. Okay. So this is the way how this course will go on. So please do join this course. It is absolutely very beneficial. And thousands of students, they got mentored here from the Strathos IES. I can say like, so they became excelled. Okay, in this answer writing skills. So now let me take to the top page. Yes, this is notes. And the first topic it is about Navy helps drone hit vessel in gulf of aden so now let us see some important things that you have to see from this article point of view so the indian navy is destroyed that is ins vishakhapatnam so this had been responded to distress called by marshall islands flagged merchant vessel that is merchant vessel Genko picarde following a drone attack in gulf of aden so in Gulf of Aden, a merchant vessel that is MV Janako Picardi, so which has been attacked by drones by this Houthis. So this comes even after this US-led coalition continued strikes on this Houthi military targets in Yemen and to degrade their capabilities in the wake of Houthi drone attacks on the ships in the Red Sea and as well as Gulf of Aden. So here actually you know that US-led coalition like US and UK so they also start attacking this Iran. So even though here what happened military targets are going on in this region. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said here. And now let us see the map. So this is map of Gulf of Aden. So this is Gulf of Aden. And here if you see countries we have Yemen. Okay. Here we have this Ethiopia, Djibouti, uh, uh, Somalia. So these are the countries to sharing boundary with this Gulf of Aden. And if you see like geographical location, the physical features of this region. So it is located in the Western Arabian Sea 
and to the, towards the left of this uh, Gulf of Aden, which extends approximately 1000 kilometers in height and as well as it is also having the good width so that it is having a narrow passage which is connected to two big water bodies that is straight. So we have this Bab and Mandap Strait. And this one is surrounding countries. So surrounding countries, they are mainly bordered by Iman, okay, in the north and Somali in the south and Zibauti and Eritrea on the west and as well as Arabian Peninsula on the east. So these are the dimensions or the geographical extent where this Red Sea is exactly located. And if you see the physical features, the Gulf is characterized by its strategic location and we are having the deep waters and even we have lots and lots of diversity of marine life and we are also having the several islands including the volcanic Socotra okay, archipelago which is very much unique for this flora and fauna which is seen here. And if you see the strategic importance of this Red Sea and as well as Gulf of Aden, so it serves as a crucial maritime route. And this route which is connecting Indian Ocean with Red Sea and beyond. So because of this, it is making it significant in international shipping and as well as passage of vessels. So Bab El Mandap Strait, it is a, it is nothing but the Gulf southernmost tip, and it is comes under this uh, world's busiest choke points through which subs, uh, substantial volume of global trade which is going on, and even oil shipments and from this Middle East, which mainly passes to this eastern as well as uh, southeast asian countries or the eastern countries or southern countries and if you see this socio-political significance so we are having issue of piracy so recently one mission had been uh, had been hacked right so gulf of aden gained global attention due to piracy incidents which are affecting this international shipping lane since 2000s onwards and if you see these pirates, they are primarily from Somalia and they targeted some vessels for the ransom and also prompting of international naval patrols and as well as security forces or security measures. And next one is geopolitical dynamics. So here the region strategic location has led to geopolitical interest and also the lessons among the countries varying for control, influence and access to the maritime trade routes. So these are some important socio-political significance of this Gulf of Aden. And if you see environmental and ecological impact, so this Gulf which hosts lots and lots of varieties, for example, we are having the ecosystems uh, which are including uh, this coral reefs, sea grasses and also sea fishes. So because of this con conservation is very very important and as one is we are also having some more environmental challenges pollution overfishing and as well as legal fishing practices they pose especially a great threat to this gulf's marine environment and even the ecosystem of this species and also the livelihood of the local communities they are going to be affected and if you see which are the economic activities so first one is fishing and maritime industries. So fishing it is significant economic activity for the coastal communities around the Gulf and also supporting livelihoods accordingly the, the region's port facilitates trade and commerce. So first one is it is providing the economic activity and it is also allowing us to move crude oil and the region's port and even it will be helpful for survey supporting of the livelihood also. And next one here is oil and gas resources. So the surrounding areas including Yemen, Somalia, so they have potential oil and gas reserves. So that will be attracting exploration activities. So I want to give you one prelims practice question. That is which of the following countries borders Gulf of Aden? Option A, Oman, Option B, Yemen, Option C, Iran and Option D, Qatar. So please let me know your comment in the comment box, like which is the correct answer. And next topic it is about land slides in Kerala. So here we are using this artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence based map of Kerala. So this has re revealed that 13 percentage of land mass is extremely vulnerable to this landslips. Okay, so it is forming under the part of multifaceted crisis which is grouping in the gripping in the region. 
so actually because of this monsoon season so this uh, is one of the important reason for this landslide and even illegal mining and construction activities so this is also one of the important reason so if you see some details it mainly says that the map shows Iriki, Palakkad, Malapuram and Pantanam Theta yes and Vaina they have highly vulnerable areas of this landslides and the process also revealed a confluence of environmental stressors that exaggerates the state's vulnerability. And this one here is critical factors so contributing for this uh, thing here is landslip vulnerability includes first order stream disturbances. So because of this stream disturbances and because of this slope to cutting and as well as developmental projects like construction of road. So they went for unscientific land use. So this is one of the important reason. And next one is how India is prone to this landslides. So let us take in national level. So how it is uh, having impact on this uh, landslides in other states. So India is concerned among the top five landslide prone area country in the world. So in India, at least one, at least one death per 100 square kilometers is reported every year due to this landslide event. And this one is rain variability pattern. So this rain variability pattern, it is a single biggest clause for landslides in the country in the Himalayas and as well as Western Ghats, they are remaining very, very highly vulnerable to this landslides. And not only this, even excluding the snow covered areas, approximately in those areas also 12.6 percentage of country's geographical land area is prone to landslides and as much as 16.5 uh, 66.5 percent of landslides they have been reported from this northwestern himalayas and even 18.8 percentage they had been reported from northeastern himalayas and 14.7 percentage they are seen from this western ghats so this is the data and now let us have a look over the map so in this area and in this area and this area and this area yes there is a lots and lots of attacks so what does this landslide so this landslide it is defined as the movement of mass of rock debris which is coming down across the slope so there are different types of mass wasting okay so it denotes any downward movement of soil and rock under the direct influence of gravity or not and this one is the in India entire Himalaya tracts which are hills and mountains in sub Himalayan territories of northeast India and western Ghats, the Nilagiris in Tamil Nadu, Konkan areas they are very much prone to landslide. And what are the government initiatives? Yes, government we have. So the government need to take some steps, right? So what are the steps taken by the government till now? So first one is we came up with the National Landslide Risk Management Strategy of 2019. So under this uh, strategy here, it overall covers aspects of landslide disaster risk reduction and as well as management. It is also focusing on hazard mapping, monitoring and as well as early warning system. So all these things are included and not only that, even they focused on awareness campaigns. Awareness campaigns, community building, training regulations, policies, as well as landslide establishment, okay, landslide stabilization and mitigation. So, actually, we are focusing on not only the disaster risk reduction, but even we are focusing on awareness to the people. So, we are coming up with awareness under this strategy. And next one is we are focused, we have this NMDA that is. National Disaster Risk Authority or National Disaster Management Authority. So it is giving the guidelines. So it outlines the steps that should be taken to reduce the risk of this landslide. And even it is focusing on the regions we have to identify, so which are very much vulnerable to this landslides. And we have to increase the use of effective landslide rehabilitation and mitigation techniques. So these all things are given under this NDMA 2009. And next one is the National Institute of Disaster Management. So it was set up and to provide capacity building. So it is set up and it is also pro focusing on providing the capacity building and support to various national and state level authorities 
in the area of disaster management and as well as we are focusing on this disaster risk reduction. So all these things are important under this NIDM. And next topic is about distress alert device DAT or DAD. So here context says that ISTRO that is Indian Space Research Organization came up with the development of improvised DAT distant, uh, distress alert transmitter or distress alert device with advanced capabilities now for the fishermen okay, who are present in the sea to send emergency messages from the boats. So if you see details, it says that the first version of DAT is operational since 2010. So since 2010 onwards, we have the first stage of this DAT. And by using this first version, we can use communication satellite and we can receive the uh, signal at the central control station. And from there here, what are the signals or the, what are the messages sent by this fisherman, they will be decoded and they will identify the location of this fishing boat and once they got the information then they will be forwarding this information to this maritime rescue coordination centers and they are under control of indian coastal guard and they will be going for search and rescue operations to save the fishermen who are in distress and take advantage of development so we are improving day by day in the science and technology so because of this advancement in this time and technology in, and even in the satellite communication, satellite navigation, is to improvise this DAT with advanced capabilities. And even they are having the good import and they should have the features evolving in the second generation of this DAT. So apart from transmitting distress signals from the sea, even this DAT SG, so which is also having the capability to receive the messages from this control loop. So what are the messages they are saying? So even they will be receiving this messages from the control centers. So by using this here, the advanced alert mechanisms, they can be sent to the fishermen at the sea. And whenever there are any events of bad weather, cyclones or tsunamis, etc. Yes, this will be very much helpful for them to reach the safer places. Okay, so these are the advantages of this DAT. And now let us see next topic it is about Place of Worship Act of 1991. So we have to see what are the provisions, what are the different sections and what are the challenges etc. So if you see Place of Worship Act, so here why it is in use because Supreme Court gave a stay regarding Allahabad High Court order. So Allahabad High Court came with an order to appoint a committee and that committee will be look into this Shahi Lodga Mosque. And now here Supreme Court said that no, we have to give the stay. So the top court has halted the appointment of commission. So top court is nothing but Supreme Court. The so Supreme Court has halted the appointment of commission after finding it was sought on a vague grounds without any particular reason. Okay, so now let us see some key provisions of this Pale Place of Worship Act. So under it, this act which underlines the need to protect the liberty of faith and worship. And this act which passed in year 1991 by this P.V. Narsim led government. So if you see what are the objectives, so they are providing for maintenance of religious characters. Yes, if, if I am going to a place of worship, yes. This place need to have the maintenance of religious character and to prohibit conversion of any place of worship and even it wants to curb or to prevent communal violence. So what are the major provisions? The first one is section 3 of this act which bars the conversion. So it bars conversion in full or part of place of worship of any religious denomination into a place of worship for a different religious denomination. For example, converting of so and so worship area from Hindus to Muslims like that. And this one is section 4, so class 1. It declares that religious character of a place of worship shall continue to be same as it existed on August 15, 1947. And this one is section 4 subclass 2 which says that any suit or legal proceedings 
any suit or legal proceedings with respect to the conversion of a religious character of any place of worship which is existing from this August 15th, 1947, which is pending before any court shall abate and no fresh suit. So there should be no legal proceedings will be happening on that. And next one here is section 5. So this section which says that we should not apply to this Raj, Raj Janma Bhumi Babri Masjid case. So this act it is not accepted or not for this Ram Janma Bhumi Babri Masjid case. And this one is section 6. It prescribes a punishment of maximum 3 years of imprisonment along with a fine or both if there is any violation to this act. And what are the challenges? Yes, we have lots of challenges. So first one is the law which has been challenged on the ground that so it bars judicial review. As you all know that judicial review is one of the important concept under our basic structure doctrine, but it is out of judicial review. And also even it imposes an arbitrary irrational, irrational uh, perspective or retrospective cutoff date because of this it is it is mainly impeding or abridging the rights of Hindus, Jains, Buddhist, Buddhist and as well as Sikhs. So this is about this topic and now let us see next topic it is about India UK relations. So next topic it is about India UK relations. So why it is the news recently our defense minister he visited UK on January 9th and finally we have two important things which are came up first one is MOU memorandum of understanding regarding establishing a bilateral international carrot exchange program and this one is the letter of agreement and this agreement which is focusing on defense collaboration in research and development so these are the two important things that we came up so if you see this areas of cooperation, so we are focusing on this defense trade. So India is among the top importer of UK defense equipment and UK has supplied India with naval vessels, aircrafts and also technology. So UK is the third largest arm supporter or exporter globally and even it will indicate uh, the role in India's defense procurement. And this one is we came up with the proper framework for UK India defense partnership. So here this partnership which is a framework which provides for a comprehensive roadmap of collaboration and even it says that we need to come together to have the joint military exercises and we have to focus on technological transfer and as well as institutional linkages. And next one is joint military exercise for example which includes exercise Ajia Varia. So it is focusing on strengthening of interoperability between Indian Army and British Army. And even we are focusing on understanding the mutual interest and we are coming up with operational coordination and as well as we are going for sharing of best practices. And even between India and UK, we have lots and lots of joint military exercises, naval exercises and as well as Air Force exercises. So next one here is regarding maritime security cooperation. So the joint working group on defense and international security which mainly collaborates maritime security issues like even anti-piracy and even we are focusing on cooperation in Indian Ocean region addresses shared concerns about the sea lane security. And this one is counter-terrorism collaboration. So both nations, they face the threats from global terrorism and even we are coming together to share the intelligence and as well as we are coming up with joint training exercises and technology co collaboration. We are focusing on even countering terrorism efforts and even we are focusing on addressing and as well as radicalization of counter extremist initiatives or narratives and even we are sharing the best practices in counter terrorism. So all these are the important areas of cooperation between India and UK. And now let us see what are the opportunities and what are the challenges that we have. Yes, challenges are like we have divergent geopolitical priorities and even we have bureaucratic hurdles and as well as resolving of diplomatic efforts for resolution, etc. And even we have some opportunities like leveraging mutual interest and allying strategic ob objectives 
and even addressing the common security concerns. So these are some important areas where we are having these challenges. And now let us have a look over the map. So here we have map. So it is nothing but UK and here we have Ireland. So here this part which is Northern Ireland okay, and this entire part which comes under this UK. And here we have North Sea. So this is also very important North Sea. And I want to give you one main question for today that is discuss the trajectory and the key components of UK India defense relations highlighting the significance of recent agreements and collaborations and next one is assess the impact of these defense relations on regional and global security dynamics so in this way you will be getting the question in your mains so try to answer this question so these are the very important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper so by this I am concluding so once Think about this main answer writing practice. If you are a beginner, I will suggest you strongly to join this course. And the cost is 8,200 rupees only. And if you want to join the course, and if you want to join the course, you can visit our website. So our website is Rathors IS Academy. So this is our website, Rathors IS Academy. So first click on login register. And later on, you can click on do not have account. So if you are visiting our website for the first time and if you have not yet registered, so click on this and you can fill the details and register. So after registering, you can use this login and ID, login and uh, login ID and password so that you can log in and click on this course list. So here we are offering lots and lots of courses and you can check the price also. So the prices are very, very minimum. Okay, you can see the prices and here at last we have this main setting codes. So click on buy course here so that you will be taken to the payment page and you can pay amount there itself and you can join. Okay, so this is about how to join this main setting course and here we have this telegram channel that is Rathor's IS classes. So here we are posting the notes. So here you can download the notes. So that's all for today. So I hope you are going to join this course and you are going to have the wonderful sessions ahead and become the part of this main translating course so that I can ensure you I will be giving you 100% assurance that you are going to excel this main answer writing. Okay, so that's all for today. I, I wish that you are going to join this course and one more thing is please do hit the like button and share this class to your friends and do subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.